Hello everyone, my name is Aubrey Nowiski and I'm the proud founder and board director for the Student Event Planners Association. I want to thank you all once again for joining us for today's webinar. We're going to get started at just five past, so if you want to take a moment to introduce yourself on the event wall, you can say your name and what chapter you belong to. If you're not a part of an SCPA chapter, we welcome you. Thanks so much for joining us today. All right, for those who have just joined, we're going to be starting in one minute. So if you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourself on the event wall, you can also post any questions throughout the webinar on the event wall, and I'm going to be introducing our guest speaker very, very soon. I do also want to remind you all that this webinar will be recorded and available on the SCPA YouTube channel, so you can check it out there as well. So thank you all for joining the call today, uh, or the webinar today, rather, um, with the Student Event Planners Association. I'm so, so excited to introduce our guest speaker today, and I know all of you are going to be completely floored with her credentials. We are very honored, humbled 
been blessed to have, honestly. She's the founder of Tourism Exposed, which she's going to give you guys a little bit more information about, but we honestly could not ask for a better speaker to speak about Networking 101. As a little bit of her background, Kimberly Ramsawak is a writer, speaker, and career consultant specializing in the travel, tourism, and hospitality industry. She got her first international tourism job at the age of 23 with no prior industry experience and to date has traveled to over 80 cities across five continents, India being her favorite place. Yes. Uh, drawing, <laughs> drawing on over 16 years of corporate experience in sales and marketing, 12 of which have been in the travel, tourism, and hospitality industry, Kimberly has taught at New York University, University of Phoenix, St. John's University, Stryer University, and the Institute for Culinary Education. Amazing. Her <laughs> travel, tourism, and hospitality industry experience has ranged from tourism marketing for America's largest tour retailers to sales management and operations for tour uh, operators, domestic and international destination destination marketing organizations. Excuse me. Kimberly holds a bachelor's degree in international marketing for Widener University and a master's degree in tourism and hospitality management from Temple University unbelievable credentials. She's a passionate advocate of women and people of color and young professionals in the travel, tourism, and hospitality industry. Kimberly is the founder, as mentioned, of Tourism Exposed, which is an online career development community that shows students and professionals how to develop a career in the travel, tourism, and hospitality industry and ultimately have the career success they desire and deserve, which is exactly what I know a lot of our students are looking for, Kimberly. So thank you so much for joining us today to share on the topic of network. Working 101. It's been a, a, a honestly amazing just getting to speak with you and get to know you. Um, and I know that a lot of our members are going to learn so much from what you have to share today. I hope so. Thank you, Aubrey, for having me. Um, when I first got a notification that um, I was invited to speak at um, SCPA's uh, webinar about networking, I was so excited because networking is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, it is, I think, the number one thing you need to know how to do to find your dream job, let alone your first job out of college. So it's very, very important that um, that students, you know, before they get into the working world, um, sort of have a grasp on networking. And, and it's not the scary, crazy beast that everyone thinks it is. It's, it's very simple and easy. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. With that? Um, so we'll just get right into the presentation. Just bear with me. Um, okay. Just let me know. Can everyone see my slides? Can you see my slides? I'm changing. Are you able to hear it? Hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I'm so sorry. I hid myself. So yes. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. So okay. So let's start. Okay. So networking 101. How to use networking to find your first job. Let me just make sure. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's start by me first asking all of you a question. How many of you would do anything to find your dream job quickly after graduation, but you're not sure what to do? Have you ever looked at your successful friends or people who seem to effortlessly get their dream jobs? They say they're looking for a job and then magically have interviews lined up automatically that lead to multiple job offers. It seems as if they're lucky always at the right place at the right time. How do they do that, you may say to yourself. It might be easy to dismiss them as being lucky, but maybe it's something else. If you were to look closely at these people, you would see that actually great career opportunities in the event planning and hospitality industry don't just come to them. They've just developed a networking strategy that covers five key tactics that we're going to talk about this evening to help those opportunities appear more frequently. But wait, before I reveal in this presentation what exactly the overall networking strategy is, the five key tactics and how to use them to find your dream job, let me introduce myself again, since Aubrey already did it. Hi, I'm Kimberly. And there's one thing I have some experience with. And it's helping students and career changers find their dream jobs in the travel, tourism, and hospitality industry. 
Now, I won't go over everything that Arby just mentioned about my background, but um, what I'm most proud about across all my years of experience in this industry, and it's important to note that I did break into this industry with no prior experience and having no connections. I used entirely networking to break into this industry 12 years ago. But what I'm most proud about my experience is that in the past year, I founded Tourism Exposed, which is a growing online community of over a thousand students and career changers who want to learn how to break into the travel, tourism, hospitality industry, including event planning, and find their dream jobs. Across all of my years of working in this industry, starting with absolutely no experience again, I discovered that there's a fundamental problem with networking. Many job seekers think that networking is scary even though 80% of people do find their jobs through someone they already know. Let me say that again. 80% of job seekers in today's economy find jobs through someone they already know. What is it about networking that is so scary? Why does it have the reputation of being so unpleasant? Here are some things that come to mind when people think of networking. Kissing up, schmoozing, brown nosing, it's not fun, you feel awkward doing it, most don't know how to start a conversation, let alone you feel that you're annoying or bugging people, or basically that it's just intimidating to be in the room with total strangers. These are all reasons why people don't like to network or go to networking events. But to sum it all up, it's just simply overwhelming. When people think about networking or that you have to network to meet people that can help you find a job, people immediately put up a mental block, roll their eyes, and get frustrated. They think networking is something that's unpleasant but a necessary evil, like going to the dentist. But networking doesn't have to be scary. Networking is the most important thing you can do if you want to break into the event planning and hospitality industry and land your first job upon at graduation. You don't need luck to find your dream job in this industry. You just need the right approach to networking, which is a lot simpler than people think. Here's how old school networking works. You go to random networking events, big or small, because that's what you're told you have to do, to meet people, such as general business card exchanges or networking mixers. You may be the quiet, introverted type of person in that you try to work the room and hope that someone will give you eye contact so you can talk to at least one person instead of wandering around the room. But that doesn't happen, so you leave feeling awkward or intimidated. Or on the other hand, you may be so confident that you know how to approach people easily and join conversations already in progress, so you then annoy anyone and everyone who will listen to you about how you're looking for a job and if they can help you. There are a few problems with this approach though. Nobody wakes up and thinks, I hope I get annoyed today. 99% of people don't like the feeling of being spoken to or befriended by someone that's only there to ask or get something from them. It's annoying. Besides, we're good at blowing off people who seem to just want to talk to us because they want something. Old school networking is an arms race for attention among the sea of job seekers. It's the people who work a room, having quick conversations with the sole purpose of collecting business cards, finding referrals, and getting a job. They think that by going around and gathering a bunch of business cards, they're actually accomplishing, accomplishing something. In reality, they're just annoying people. The problem isn't meeting new people. The problem is that old school networking and networkers don't take the time to actually get to know anyone, yet they still expect people they barely know to supply them with referrals and job sources. With more and more job seekers looking for their dream job, it's easy to annoy industry professionals and hiring managers. You're not really getting attention by doing this. You're actually losing it. So you may say, OK, fine, Kimberly. I don't want to annoy people. What's a better way? Let's change the concept of networking and redefine it as something we need and love to do to connect with successful people just for the purpose of doing so and making new friends and expanding our community. There's a way to network with people with ease, 
confidence, and precision. It's moving away from viewing successful people as just a collection of business cards that you put in a drawer and pull out only when you need it or viewing people as products or what they can do for me to being cognizant of the fact that successful people are people just like we are. If you think of this and not just view them as stepping stone in your ladder to career success, I guarantee you, you will actually become more successful in reaching your career goals quicker, especially right after graduation. I know this goes against everything you were taught about networking, but I promise you it works. So today, I want to show you exactly how to really find your dream job using the new way of networking. And it's what I like to call conscious connecting. You might be wondering, what exactly is conscious connecting? Not only is conscious connecting a different and more natural approach to networking, it's also more effective. Conscious connecting takes the networking people know and hate and turn it on its head. It's about attracting those who can help you instead of annoying them. It's about providing value instead of pushing your way in. It's all about them and never about you. I want you to completely forget about what the other person can do for you. For the time being, it's all about them. Many people think that as soon as you've made a connection with someone and offered a minuscule of value, you can immediately get value back from them by asking for a favor, connection, etc. This is a huge mistake. Don't ask the important people you just met to immediately do something for you that is equal or lesser value to what you've just done for them. Think about the quality of the connections you make and the relationships you build as depositing money in a bank account. All the things you do for the other person serve as the principal. You start making withdrawals from the account in the form of you getting value back from the relationship only after you have made enough deposits and let the principal grow enough to generate substantial interest. It also helps you get long-term leverage. Leverage that will enable potential mentors, sponsors, thought leaders, and professionals at all levels in the event planning industry to want to connect with you and serve as referrals or influencers on your behalf. Oftentimes, newly opened positions will be communicated among a hiring manager's professional network before it's even listed publicly. And the best jobs usually never get the chance to be advertised publicly to begin with via online job boards or postings. So making strong professional connections should be your top priority if you wanted your name to be the first on people's minds when they come across available career opportunities. So this may sound all well and good, but I know you must be saying to yourself, how do I figure out exactly who to connect with? It's simple but not easy. How to find industry professionals to connect with? The best way to start finding people that you want to add value to that can help you in your job search is to first research people in your target career niche, job function, and job title. Or, second, develop a target list of five to ten companies where you would like to work for that you could seek out former and or current employees to start building relationships with. Instead of giving your business cards out to random people at networking events, I recommend you using social media, my favorite is LinkedIn, to find the top people in your target career niche, job function, or job title that you admire. So for example, if you're interested in a career in event management and you think you want to go into marketing, your career niche will be event management, your job function would be marketing, and the possible job title you would have would be a conference manager. You would need to really determine who you want to be like. The goal here is to focus on those key people who do or have done the type of work you want to do or have worked at the company or type of companies you specifically want to work for. From there, take baby steps to build a relationship. Think of yourself as a tree trunk in which the root of the tree is you going out and strategically connecting with key people. The branches of the tree are the relationships you build. And like the branches of a tree, building one relationship can lead to another, and in turn can lead to another, and on and on. This is what I like to call the tree trunk effect. As you connect and develop relationships, in time you will be the root of the tree in which multiple industry people will get to know you and your name in various circles. 
Again, I want you to completely forget about what the other person can do for you. For the time being, it's all about them. Regarding developing a list of five to ten target companies that you would like to or you dream about working for, you do this by figuring out what companies you want to work for. You can't just tell everyone that you are looking for any type of job. You have to be very specific in what type of job, position, and company you are looking for so in turn the right people will know how to help you. Effective job seekers looking for opportunities in the event planning and hospitality industry invest time up front to really figure out and understand exactly which companies they want to target through extensive online research. They then relentlessly find connections to these companies through conscious connecting. By the time they set out their first 10 resumes that are highly targeted and use the language that the hiring manager uses, they're going to have an inside connection to those 10 jobs. So the effective job seeker who sent out 10 resumes will have a better chance of getting a job than the person who sends out 50 resumes. Because by the time they're ready to submit an application, it goes through an already established contact no matter how developed it is and is 10 times more likely to result in a job offer. So you figured out who to approach. How do you add value exactly? What do you have that you can possibly give? You may consider yourself too young or think of yourself as someone who doesn't have any experience. After all, you are trying to break into an industry that may be new to you. So what possible value do you have to give as a graduating person? There are three things that you can give that are deemed valuable to people you're trying to connect with. And that's advice, connections, and drive. So let's talk about each one of these three. Advice. Even though you're going to looking to connect to people to get advice, it's important for you to be prepared to give advice. There are a lot of different areas in which you can provide advice. To figure out what type of advice you can give goes back to you doing your research. Are they looking for the solution to a particular problem that you can help them with? What are some of your hobbies or interests that you may be that you may keep up on where you can send them related news just for their information? Don't think that just because you're outside of the event planning and hospitality industry that people who are experienced and established professionals in the industry have nothing to learn from you. The more you believe that, the less useful you'll become to those people. Whereas, the more you believe that you have something valuable to give, the more you're going to become a valuable research resource and people around you. And it's precisely the fact that's going to attract people in positions of power to you. The fact that you think that you have things of value to give to these people, such as advice. Number two, connections. Providing business as well as social connections can be very beneficial to the people you want to connect with. For example, your uncle may be the dean of a university where the person you would like to connect with wants to perhaps teach. Or you may know of an, an event that's going on that may interest them. Or of the latest cool app that you think could help them be more productive. Remember the tree trunk effect. The more people you have in your community, the more you can plug more people into it and offer them connections. The more it becomes this growing entity. Number three, drive. Your drive, willingness, and effort to work your butt off to act on the advice you receive and make things happen is one of the most valuable things you can give to people you want to connect and build a relationship with. Successful people want to help those who are willing to learn from them and soak up their wisdom and act on their teachings. The biggest compliment people in positions of power can receive is to know that they played a part in helping someone, especially college students that are graduating, be successful, who not only listened to their advice, but also actually did something with it. Remember, my motto for conscious connecting, not network networking, is to focus on the person, but by giving, giving, and giving, and then asking, or what I like to call the give, 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 ask model. You're looking for these people to give to you, but the way you bring these people into your corner is to give to them, using the three areas of adding value we just talked about. Advice, connections, and drive. But warning, conscious connecting takes work. You can't just lay, lie back and relax. But I guarantee your job-seeking competitors are not doing this. And it may be a lot of work up front now versus just blindly sending resumes out online to online job boards, but you will see exponentially bigger rewards in the longer term. Just think of this formula. Focus, 
plus connecting with the right people, plus offering something of value equals career success. Or in short, keep calm and connect, cultivate relationships, and contribute. So we spoke about what conscious connecting is, its importance, and who we should connect with and how versus everyone and anyone. And lastly, how to provide value to them. Now let's talk about where do you go to meet people in order to connect in the first place that's going to make the most of your investment of time, energy, and attention. How do you figure out where to go to meet and connect with successful people in the event planning and hospitality industry? The real question is, or should be, who do you want to help? The answer to this question should be consistent with your ultimate goal. If you want to get hired for a hotel event management position, for example, then you will want to help a department head that has events that need managing at their hotel. Once you get a sense of who you want to help or who your target audience is, it's easier to find out where these people hang out. So do some research on them. The more you learn about them, the more places you'll find them frequenting. I remember going to the Chamber of Commerce's network events when I was first trying to break into this industry back in 2002. I went to these events because I always thought it's what networking was all about. I now realize that pretending to be interested in everyone's company at these events was a waste of time and instead I needed to be researching my first or second top dream companies, figuring out how I could fix problems for them, and showing up when, wherever current and or former employees of these companies were so that I connect, could connect with them. Don't go to events just because they are called networking events. Go to events in places where either you know there are going to be a specific people there who you want to help and get to know better, or it's on a topic that you know is going to be centered on something that is going to draw in people who are aligned with something you're interested in. This is how you separate yourself from every other event planning and hospitality job seeker out there. So the best places you need to be in order to meet and connect with successful people in the event planning and hospitality industry are professional associations, niche organizations, public events, and industry trade shows. So let's go over each of these one by one. Joining professional associations is not an option. I think it's actually a requirement if you want to make powerful connections. This industry thrives on the sharing of best practices and discussion of trends, and associations are one of the major conduits for this type of engagement to happen. Joining an association allows you to not only learn more about the industry, but also the sheer number of professionals that you co can come in contact with in one place is actually tremendous. Most associations provide members with full access to their entire membership database, complete with full contact names, respective companies, and contact information. In addition, most if not all of the associations in event planning and hospitality typically, typically hold events such as conferences, seminars, and job fairs. Examples of professional associations are the National Association for Catering and Events and the Event Planners Association, which you may well already be familiar with, of course. Niche organizations. Niche organizations enable you to reach a narrowly target audience. It's an easy way for you to build your visibility within a specific area of the industry and connect on a more strategic level. A common interest, which is what niche organizations provide, makes interacting easier than at overall networking events where connections made can be shallow. Do some research, then join one that's highly relevant to your target audience to begin connecting. An example of a niche organization is the International Special Events Society and the Meeting Professionals International. Number three, public events. Attending industry events that are open to the public is a great way to meet various professionals in event planning and hospitality in a more informal way. Usually public events such as expos, seminars, and workshops have a panel of speakers that talk about a variety of topics that are timely and thought-provoking. If you can get the speaker list or a list of attendees beforehand, you can identify at least one person who you would like to meet and make arrangements to connect there in person so you could tap into their expertise. Travel shows and expos are a good example of public events. And you could actually go to www.travelshows.com for a complete listing of expos in major cities across the US. Lastly, number four, trade shows. 
Industry trade shows are exhibitions in which companies across the event planning and hospitality industry showcase their products and services. Whether you're actively looking for a job at a new company or simply hoping to learn more about current industry trends, trade shows are great places to meet industry insiders from a number of companies. And what's really, really, really interesting is that BizBash Live is the leading, which is the leading trade show for meeting and event professionals, is actually having one of their major public events and trade shows coming up on October 28th in New York City. You can go to bizbash.com for more information about this public event. Overall, remember you should always think about why you're going to a specific event or joining a specific or association or organization. Think about what it is that you have in common with those whom you want to connect with in these four areas and what the outcome is that you actually want. Now let's talk about how to stand out and what to say to make a good impression, either in person or via email, so that you start a relationship with important people who can help you break into the event planning and hospitality industry the right way and gain exposure. Let's talk about approaching industry professionals in person. What you should do before you actually go to an event. Homework, homework, homework. You have to do your homework. What most people, people don't realize is that the majority of the work in trying to connect with industry professionals is done before the event even occurs. Most events have an attendee list on the registration page. See if a person is on the list that you would want to connect with. Look them up via their LinkedIn profile, for example, to learn about them prior to seeking them out at the event. And planning for the event, do the following two things. Practice a short introduction about yourself. Notice I said the word short. Sharing too much information about yourself with potential connection you just met can be annoying. So condense your background into literally a minute-long soundbite. The key points you should cover are your career goals, your recent professional background or education, and an explanation on how your background prepares you for new opportunities. Then, prepare yourself for conversations with event planning and hospitality professionals. Spend time researching and reading about industry news, trends, and recent events so that you'll be prepared to spark conversation and ask for your thoughts on topics that are interesting to both you and them. Taking the time to learn about issues and current events in the industry will give you the information you need to ask intelligent questions and join conversations already in progress. Now regarding what you should do during an event, you're now ready to engage as soon as you meet someone with conversation topics, questions, and stories stored in the back of your mind that you develop from your pre-event research or homework. Now here are some conversation guidelines to make sure the conversation doesn't lose steam and gently gets you to the goal of having the event planning and hospitality professional give you their business card willingly. Number one, small talk. Every conversation should begin with a little bit of small talk because you can't just go directly into asking industry professionals for their business cards right when you meet them. I think it's rude and it's too abrupt. The problem is that most industry job seekers keep their conversation with industry professionals at the small talk level where they don't get past the basic intro introductions. Now, in order to get past the basic introductions, we now come to the common point of interest, or what I call CPI. Telling the CEO of your dream country, dream company, excuse me, that you love their work or admire their approach to business will not invite stimulating conversation past a simple thank you. Your goal is really to start inquiring in ways that are relevant to how you might be able to add value. The easiest way to do this is to determine a common point of interest. The common point of interest, or CPI, allows industry professionals, no matter how high they may be up on the ladder, feel more comfortable talking to you. The CPI will also help you avoid those awkward, how's the weather type of conversations. The key to determining a CPI is to ask engaging, open-ended questions such as, what did you think about the latest book on, or when was the last time you, or what is your favorite industry event? In other words, questions that don't elicit a simple yes or no or one word answer. It's all about guiding the conversation away from how are you to who are you. When you ask engaging questions, a CPI is almost always discovered. Lastly, 
wrap up. Simply and politely end the conversation by saying how nice it was to meet them and then exchange business cards. So to summarize, first engage in the small talk and get a rapport going. Then find out what the person is up to, what's important to them, and what you have in common. Lastly, direct the conversation in ways where you think you could add value. Remember, there are three things that you can give that are deemed valuable to people you're trying to connect with. Advice, connections, and drive. No matter what you want to learn or know, finding the CPI or the common point of interest sets you apart from the rest of industry job seekers and makes it easier for you to then continue the communication with industry professionals after the event. Now let's talk about reaching out to industry professionals via email. What's the best way to reach out to event planning and hospitality professionals that you're unable to initially meet in person through an event or reconnect with those that you did not meet in an event? Write and send out emails to them requesting informational interview. We've all heard about informational interviews, but few of us actually do it. An informational interview is an opportunity to meet someone you're curious about in the event planning and hospitality industry and learn from them. Ask them questions about their job and get the inside scoop on the industry overall. For example, maybe you're curious about what an event manager actually really does or you want to know what the culture at a particular company is like. This is what an informational interview allows you to do. But what is it that makes a professional in the industry respond or not respond to your email requests? How do you get this person to care about you? How do you make sure that your email isn't going to annoy them or take up their valuable time? If you want to meet with a potential mentor or boss, you just don't email the person blindly, bearing knowing anything about them. When you do this, you're basically saying, hey, you don't know me at all, but can you meet with me and give me an hour of your advice for free? How far do you think this approach will get you? I want you to know how to write an email that will begin a relationship and leave a lasting impression. And to do this, you got to do your homework. So Google them. See what comes up. Spend some time on their social media accounts to find out what's important or interesting to them. See who's interconnected between you and them on Facebook and LinkedIn, for example. Go out and buy their book and read it if they have written one. Investigate what events they go to or view what groups they belong to on LinkedIn. You now have a frame of reference in which to base your email content and develop a CPI. The time of the event planning and hospitality professional you admire is valuable. Show them that you respect their time by being mindful of what you ask them and how you ask it. Your email must always include a specific reason as to why you're contacting them. By having a specific reason, you will eliminate the need to use the vague question, can I pick your brain? Some important guidelines for making a good email first impression are, the emails are brief and concise, a CPI is immediately explained in order to establish instant credibility, a specific arrest request is made of the industry professional in which they can simply say yes or no, don't make the industry professional do the work by making them figure out how they can help you or what you want. Emails also avoid including pointless questions. And also, the job seeker didn't write a lot of detail about themselves in the email. Most people wait for an event to meet professionals in the event planning and hospitality industry, but it's far more effective to be proactive and not be afraid to send out an email. Don't wait until the event. Send out an email. The majority of job seekers in this industry are not doing this, and this act alone will set you way ahead of your competitors. So here's an example of an email requesting an informational interview. So let's go over it. So the subject. We'd love to chat about your work in the hospitality industry. So you would start with the email, hi. Hi, Kimberly. My name is Aubrey, and I'm a 2014 grad from... Temple University. I came across your name on LinkedIn where we have a connection in common and you put the name of the connection. I love to have a quick 30 minutes of your time, buy you coffee, and ask you a few questions about your career successes. I especially love to know how you made your choices after graduating from Temple University, for instance. I'm in the process of shifting my career focus from event marketing to event sales and will love and will value your advice. 
I can meet you for coffee or at your office or wherever it's convenient. Would it be possible for us to meet? Thanks. And you put your name. You can see that this email adheres to each of the five gui guidelines. You can find more word-for-word -word email templates requesting informational interviews on my website, tourismexposed.com. But once you've connected with someone you admire, whether it's at an event, via an email, or in an informational interview, what is the secret to turning that one-time meeting into an ongoing relationship? Following up. You cannot forget to follow up. Once you have someone you've connected with once, it's important to maintain that momentum and build that relationship by constantly adding value. If you're going to meet someone who you really want to connect with in the industry, why go to all that trouble and then drop the ball by not following up? I'll tell you why. It's because when we talk to someone who is in a place where we would like to be, especially top level professionals in this industry, in the back of our minds we think, there's no way I can help this person. She's a vice president. She knows way more about whatever than I do. I should, not, I should just get her advice, send her a quick thank you email, and then never bug her again. This is exactly the wrong way to think about and approach following up. Contrary to proper belief, a simple thank you message or email isn't enough. Everyone sends it. It's become a basic requirement. So how do you go beyond that to actually make industry professionals want to help you? you use what I call maintaining the momentum technique, which is a series of three emails that you send over a certain period of time that helps you stay in touch with industry professionals you've met once and turn a one-time meeting into a long-term relationships. You can go to tourismexpose.com to see the actual three-step email templates for the maintaining momentum technique. But now to summarize, You've learned a framework for building and creating connections to support you versus just traditional networking. You now know how to identify and target the right industry professionals who can help you find your dream job. You've discovered the best places in order to meet and connect with industry professionals that are in positions of power to help you, how to finally stand out, and what to say to separate yourselves from other job seekers and make a good impression so that you start relationships the right way and lastly, how to write emails to industry professionals requesting informational interviews. Today, I challenge you to try putting all of this into practice. Make a list of at least three people you would like to reach out to and think about how you could initially provide value to them. Also, I challenge you to identify at least two industry events that you will go to in the next couple of months. I've already given you one, which is the Biz Bash coming up in a couple weeks in New York City. And lastly, I challenge you to brainstorm a list of three to five professionals in the event planning and hospitality industry you'd like to connect with and email them requesting an informational interview. To learn more about networking overall and using conscious connecting to find and land your first dream job and get word for word email templates we spoke about, you can go to tourismexposed.com. Also there, you can download a free copy of the Quick Start Guide to Landing Your Travel, Tourism, and Hospitality Dream Job. And in the spirit of conscious connecting, you can also reach me at the email address listed here. Thanks for watching. And any questions? Kimberly, that was absolutely <laughs> amazing on behalf of the student event planners association I'm completely floored you definitely prepared for that presentation I, there's no doubt anybody who listened in and will be listening into this conference will just say oh my gosh she is so credible she knows her stuff the angle that you took in communicating a very a topic that's spoken about a lot uh, I'm speechless it's that was amazing absolutely Thank amazing you. I made so many notes oh my gosh okay so questions that I have that are common questions for for students um, when should they start doing this well I recommend for okay so for se college seniors I would start soon as you start your, your fall semester so in September of your senior year I would start researching people on LinkedIn well take a step back I would really before I even start reaching out to people I would really try to figure out what exactly do I really want to do when I graduate what type of job, what type of companies do I want to work for, 
what type of job title do I really want to have? So research it, start looking at job boards and looking at job descriptions, um, start researching on LinkedIn, you know, the top event planning professionals, start reading periodicals or news online to really see who's doing what, who's popular on Twitter, um, you know, who's the mover and shakers. And then once you sort of get a game plan of, okay, I like, you know, this person, she's, you know, really doing her thing at this company, or I really like this company because, you know, they're small, they're, you know, where I want to live, they may be in New York City and I really want to move there. Then start reaching out and sort of planting the seeds to really get your name in front of the people. And that's where the informational um, email requests for informational interviews will come in. So you would do that in the first semester of your senior year. So September, October, November, you're doing research on what you want to do and you're getting names and you're getting company names. And then you're starting to reach out. So ideally, by the holidays, by January, you've already reached out and you're starting to actually meet with them in person. And then at which point you met with them in person, you're going to plant the seeds and, you know, send them emails, get to know them, develop the relationship, so that when May comes along, you're not some, I don't remember that person. What was that person's name? Where did I meet her? What did we talk about? You're in the top of mind of that professional, and they're like, you know what? I remember Aubrey. I just spoke to her last month, and she, you know, sent me a really cool article that I thought was interesting. You know, this job just came across my desk. Let me give her a call and see if she's interested. So that's the plan, to really sort of, you know, harvest your garden before you need it. So I really oh, recommend September. Dig your well before you're thirsty. Oh, and absolutely. I, I encourage students, guys, it really, it's never too early to start, um, especially in researching and figuring out what you want. And I, I want to make a shameless plug for the Student Event Planner Association, but leverage the volunteer opportunities that you guys have to participate in mm -hmm. to kind of try and identify what do you like, what do you don't like, you know, talk to the people who uh, you're, you're wor working the events for to get mm -hmm. to know them a little bit better, what they do, because um, they can also be a reference for you. Uh, the Absolutely. mentors that you get through the e-mentor program, you know, being able to ask them questions. Um, and, and absolutely, I think one of the biggest things that you guys can, can take from this webinar today is that it does take work. You know, if you want that Absolutely. dream job, you're going to have to put in the time to do it. But I think she definitely, you know, gave the case that if you put in that time, you're going to be so much closer to target than you would be if you just shot in the dark. Um, so great, great on that. Um, you mentioned, um, you know, there's definitely a couple places that they can start to do this research. SCPA, for one, you guys can check mm -hmm. out the member portal. We links in there that you know include some of the top people to follow on Twitter, the top blogs, mm -hmm. the top conferences to attend. Um, mm -hmm. What other resources can they find on your website or other online? I know about.com's got some great mm -hmm. resources that kind of spell out the industry. Where did you look when you uh, when you were trying to find these resources? Um, well, my website is a pretty good um, resource. Um, shameless plug. Um, I have basically laid out this entire presentation in an article format, and I've actually um, made a point to include word-for-word -word email templates that you can literally plug in and send. Um, so email templates requesting informational interviews and also after, you, after you've met with them in person or you've made the initial connection via email and you've talked to them on the phone, how, what do you say and what emails do you send and when do you send them to follow up? So I've given the actual timelines and the actual word-for-word -word scripts on, on how to write that and just send it out. Um, so that can be found on my website as well. And also, um, <laughs> if you join Tourism Exposed, which is completely free to join, um, I have a comprehensive list of every association, niche organization, public event, trade show, expo, across the entire travel, tourism, hospitality, sport management, and event planning industry. I mean, I scoured Google and, you know, based on my own knowledge and experience and really um, made a point to really include a meaty, meaty, meaty um, resource list well, along with website, full URLs of all the associations. So you can find it on my website as well. Incredible, incredible resource. Hint, hint, wink, wink. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what is something that when they actually go to attend, let's say a networking event or an industry association, what is the must bring or what, what should they bring with them? 
Um, I don't think it's more important to bring something as much as what to have in your head. Absolutely. Um, you have to have done your homework. So you sort of have this, everything's always about having a game plan. Mm -hmm. So before you go to the event, you know what the event is about, who's going to be there, what's the purpose of the event, what's the agenda, who's going to talk. And these days you could get that right off their website. I mean, right. and if not, you could always contact the event organizer and volunteer and get the mem you know, the attendee list and then just Google each name down, you know, going down the list. So it's quite easy to have all this information before you go to the event. So once you have this information, you sort of figure out, okay, in my head, this is my goal. I'm going to go in. I have this goal. This is the type of job I want to get. You know, I I'm, I want to do get after graduation. So I'm going to focus on this X Y Z person, or I'm going to target at least five people. I'm not going to leave until I have spoken to at least five people, and sort of have this really sort of clear cut, hard uh, sort of goal for yourself walking in. And you've done your homework. You have talking points. Um, you have, you know, you already established a common point of interest based on your research. So you're not walking in blindly. And when you do your homework, it's in, it sort of eliminates the need for you to fumble your words or sort of be a loss for words, which is I think we've all been there when you're like, uh, you know, I don't know what to say. Or So by doing your homework, it sort of eliminates that immediately. Absolutely, absolutely, so so important. And um, I think you had made a really um, important point about, oh gosh, what was it? Um, about no, knowing what you want when you go there to be able, if anyone's going to be able to help you, you've got to know what you want. That's exactly. the best way for them to advise you. And I know there's so many times I have these conversations with you know students who essentially want me to figure out their career path and their job. Exactly. <laughs> right? I'm yeah, like, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. That requires you to do the research, Absolutely. right? And, and Absolutely. You definitely have to be respectful of professionals' time. Absolutely. Um, that's and they want to help you. I mean, I mean, the, the yeah. you know the perception is that you know VPs or directors or presidents and CEOs they they don't want to help you. They want to help you, but you have to help them help you. And, and by doing that, you sort of know you know what is your career niche, what is your you know your desired function, and what is your job title because they're, they're gonna they're expecting you to know that. And right. you know, so that's just you know sort of the basic requirement of entry is to know those know those things. Absolutely. So. Yeah. What about business cards? Um, I do think you should um, carry business cards. It def definitely, it's you know sort of a you know a, an even exchange. But for students, I understand that they they may not have a lot of work experience and they don't know what to include in business cards. Um, so I really recommend literally instead of focusing on the past, focus on the future. So on your business cards, you write your name, of course. Um, you're a recent 2015 graduate of XYZ University, and I would I would write basically a job title, your desired job title. So, aspiring director of events, you know, events and, and marketing, or hotel ho uh, manager of hotel event hotel marketing, um, or event planner for a hotel. Write your, you know, you of course do your research and literally copy down the job title on your business card and put the top three or four skills you think hiring managers would need and you would literally pull it from job descriptions so um, uh, easy communicator or um, multitasker but you know ability to handle pressure or quick thinker and literally think of your business card as a, a quick walking resume snapshot of your resume mm -hmm. so when you give it to someone they're looking at it and say oh, okay I know Aubrey, she's just graduated. This is the job title she's looking for, and these are her four top skills. Boom, boom, boom. So I know something comes across my desk. I know exactly what she's looking for and what she could bring to the table. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also your social media icons won't, won't hurt as well. Right. Contact information, phone number, yep. email address, and yep. making sure that your email address is something professional. Um, okay. I know students yes. also <laughs> have a tendency to put their school email address, which no. once you graduate, <laughs> that no. is And no it's so easy. Really. Just first name, last name at gmail.com. You got it. You got Simple. it. Absolutely, and and direct them to additional information. You know, you should mention social media links. So your LinkedIn profile, or if you have a blog, or if you have a website, you know, make sure that they you direct them to to where they can get additional information about about you. And before you before you put those social media icons on your business card, 
I would definitely recommend to make sure across all your social media accounts that it's consistent and professional. Absolutely. So you definitely want to have a headshot of yourself, a professional headshot as your profile image, the same profile image across all of your social media accounts and you know a, a quick bio about yourself that would match the same bio you put in your business card so for instance aspiring hotel event planner and, and make sure it's professional I can't stress that enough if you have a Facebook account that's personal that's fine but create another one right. that's professional right. and make sure and change your privacy settings so no one could find your personal Facebook account um, but definitely definitely want to make sure it's consistent Absolutely. Another one about when attending kind of industry events, um, two two part is is it acceptable to be a fr to bring a friend? And what about drinking alcohol? Um, I do think it's acceptable to bring a friend only if they act as leverage, not as a crutch. Um, so if I bring a friend to this networking event, and I know it could be intimidating to walk into a room of five hundred people. I know that. So you may want to bring a friend who has the same career goals as you do, right. but do not stay with them the entire event. You literally walk into the event, you register, and you part your ways and meet back up. Meet meet back up. Excuse me. At the end of the event, um, only the only instance I would see you talking to them or having any type of interaction with them is if they know someone that you want to know, and vice versa. So you would literally use them as an introduction piece. That's the only instance you're ever to be talking to them at any networking event or business event or trade show event, etc. So think compliment and introduction, but not as a crutch. Absolutely. Um, I think this is... We've got a kind of unique question, so I think this is something that could probably be answered um, in a lot more words. Um, but it's with from Kimberly. She's a student. I'm a student currently attending college, um, and I'm trying to be a writer and expose my my uh, writing by posting on websites and various group pages to to you know earn criticism and followers. Um, can networking have you know any positive help and in, in helping her to expose her website more and how? Absolutely. And I think we're yeah. It's, it's the same. If you're looking for a job or you're an entrepreneur trying to promote your business, the networking of rules that I spoke about is the exact same. Whether you want someone to help you find a job or someone or a customer that you you know that you want to buy your product or services, it's the exact same. You have to provide value first, right, in order to get value back. So absolutely, networking is the same rules apply. Absolutely, and you know your your give 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 act uh, is a great parallel to I, I believe there's that that new book punch 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 jab and it's kind of relates to how marketing you know we or as entrepreneurs you give free content or give free content to give free content Absolutely. you get these followers and then you can ask for the sale type. Absolutely, so yep. it's the, it's the same concept um, and it works right yes it definitely it does works. work it does and it work. doesn't leave any sort of bad taste in either party's mouth um, you know yeah. and I think. Um, that's one thing about in talking to students, um, leveraging their existing network. Once they come to graduation, a lot of students forget that they have a network that they've developed, their family, their friends, their mm -hmm. friends' friends, all this, and, they, and they're afraid to ask them sometimes. And I remember a student had asked me this because they, she said, I, I feel like I'm using my family or I'm using my friends. And I think one of the things I told her was, you know, if you're willing to help those individuals, Absolutely. that's kind of the mentality that you have to have. you got to be willing to help others before, you know, they can help you. So absolutely, absolutely love You really it. have to believe that you, you have things of value to offer. You do. Right. Just because you're a student graduating doesn't mean you don't have anything to give. So you right. can't think that you're, you know, being an annoyance or you're bugging them um, by giving of yourself first. You know, if you're going to call them up and you haven't spoken to them in years to ask them for a job, then yes, you are. But if you really come from the genuine, authentic right. place of wanting to help, it's going to come back tenfold. Absolutely. Um, you had mentioned drive as one of those things. What is your, um, you know, because we often encourage, you know, our members to get out there and get some experience, you know, give give of themselves freely, essentially, by, you know, volunteering, you know, to help an event planner because they can never have too many hands and then helping them to orchestrate. What is your feeling on, um, you know, kind of how, how would you pose that, you know, of, hey, if you ever need any assistance, feel free to give me a call. 
Is that I something definitely do you think that in order to you have to crawl before you could walk and you know walk before you could run, and, and I know um, at the graduation everyone you know sort of thinks I shouldn't be working for free. I need to have a paying job, but that's part of the, you know of the give 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 ask model. You have to be able to work for free for some point, you know, in order to get you to the next level. So I definitely think, you know, it, it's, it's definitely part of your informational interview when you're speaking to someone and you, you've already a sort of established a relationship, um, right. you know, and you sort of establish a rapport to offer up your services for free. Um, I do think that's definitely wise because it could just, you never know where it could come from. Never, never know. And just to give you a little story about that, um, I am originally from Philadelphia. And I moved to New York, and now I live in the Poconos, Pennsylvania. Um, when I lived in Philadelphia, like I said, I had no prior experience in this industry. I was working as a marketing assistant at a medical textbook publishing company. Nothing to do with this industry, <laughs> let me tell you. And I went, I remember NYU was having a career class in travel and tourism. And it was a continuing education course, and I went. And after the course, it was a, a one-day course, mm -hmm. and after the course, I befriended the instructor, and she was a, a person that had a gazillion years in the industry. She was a renowned tour operator, a tour guide in New York City. She had all the experience, all its connections, and during the, co during the course of her class, I noticed that she was very disorganized. She had books everywhere on her desk, papers as she was teaching. It was a lot of papers, a lot of books that she was referring to. And I offered to help organize her class. And just for me offering that, you know, I offered to take her out to coffee right after class. After class, we went out to coffee, and I offered to help her organize her class and her fawning system, and we became friends. And I did this from living in Philadelphia. I did this basically remotely, a remote internship, if you will. And we became friends, and in a span of 11 months, she emailed me and told me that she was retiring and moving to Arizona and if I could take over and teach her class for her. Wow. And That's kind of since fun. then, I've been teaching this NYU course, Careers in Travel, Tourism, and Hospitality course. It's coming up October 25th, by the way, in and, and NYU. And it's just no experience. I just had book knowledge of the industry and just working with her and getting to know her and, you know, and sort of, you know, being a sponge of all the things she taught me and proved to myself that I was hungry enough and skilled enough and willing enough to do what it takes and she recommended me for that course and NYU hired me just based on her recommendation. So that should really sort of lend to, to the power of just giving of yourself and not being afraid to just put yourself out there and take a chance because no one else is doing this. No one else is doing this. I guarantee you. Very few people do this. Uh, the job seeker population, the percentage of people that are doing this are very, very low. Right. So, and you made, you made a very important point about how a lot of these job opportunities are not listed no. at all. Don't even get a chance to get to that phase. So you really yeah. have to have the inside connection. You've got to know someone who knows someone who's mm -hmm. able to make that recommendation for you. So the students, you know, if you guys, um, not to call you out, but if you're spending your weekends, you know, partying and not building relationships, you may have a great resume or a great um, you know, piece of paper when you graduate, but if no one knows your name, they can't refer you, right? Absolutely. Um, and it's all about referrals. So, um, this has been an unbelievable webinar. Amazing, amazing content that you've shared. Um, I am so excited for everyone who is benefiting from this webinar, and I just want to say how much we appreciate you taking your time today. Um, if there's anything that you, in addition, that you would like to say or like to share, and then we'll wrap up today's webinar. Well, if anyone has any questions, um, my information is tourismexposed.com, and all my contact information is on the website. Um, feel free to join. It's free and become a part of my, my community. Um, but yes, if you have any questions about networking or in the spirit of conscious connecting would like to, you know, take me out to coffee <laughs> and pick my brain, I would love, I would love to talk to you to you one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's by, by phone or email. Please, please, thank you. I, I really um, believe that um, networking is really the key that really gets people where they want to be as far as their career success is concerned. So, Amen. Thank you, Kimberly, so much. So thank much. you very much.
And uh, for all the students who are part of SCPA who are watching this webinar, we will be posting the questionnaire that corresponds with this webinar within the next coming days. You can find the recording of this webinar on our YouTube channel and below in the comments or description section, you will find the link to that uh, questionnaire to receive credit for this webinar for the professional development program for SCPA. So, and to all those who, to all those who are not part of SCPA who joined in on today's webinar, thank you also. We appreciate it. And uh, definitely feel free to go to our Facebook page check out our upcoming events as well. Um, we do have some more videos included in this How to Land Your First Job webinar series. And Kimberly, thank you so much for being such a contributor to that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye.